To tell us about his geneticist we honor tonight, here are Mark Zuckerberg and Vin Diesel. Hello, everyone. (laughs) Albert Einstein once said, the most beautiful thing we can experience is the mysterious. It is the source of all true art and science. As a child, I relied on fantasy and science fiction as a form of escapism. I've been fortunate enough to transfer that passion into making movies. The objective as a filmmaker is simple. It is to take the imaginary world and somehow make it seem real. However, the scientists have an even tougher job to take the real world and conjure the truth hidden behind it. Engineers and scientists share this basic mindset that you can take any system understand it better, and then make it much, much better than it is today. Scientists look at a problem, they break it down, uh, break it into smaller problems that you can solve, test your ideas, uh, learn from the results, and iterate until you find a better and better solution. That's why progress in science is so fast. You might even call it fast and furious. Wait a minute! (laughs) Come back, come back. All right. Now, the, the amazing thing is that the human body does this too. Uh, and DNA can regulate itself, it can repair itself, and it can even rewrite its own code when it senses glitches that can lead to cancer. So here's a video about the geneticist who pioneered a, a lot of this work. I grew up in a small Midwestern town, and my grandmother worked at Montgomery Wards. So she agreed to buy me a chemistry set. I spent all my time doing all these really neat experiments. I would make perfumed soap, but I'd have things that would start bubbling. It really got me interested in what the world around me was made of. When I was a postdoc, I decided to find this key gene to allow you to do gene editing, but it turned out to be the wrong gene. And I was really depressed about that, and I just wanted to throw it away. But it turned out that I found one thing interesting about this gene was that it actually became activated in response to DNA damage. The simplest way to understand this is to think about how the cell is really like a city. Because there is this sort of inner organization of a cell, it's just like a city. The instructions for building a city are the blueprints. And the blueprints for a cell are the DNA. So any mistake in the blueprints And that city and all the other cities that are built are gonna have that mistake. And that can lead to all kinds of problems. So we found these sentinel proteins that are scouring the genome. And when they find a problem, they basically set up a solid state signaling machine. It's like a radio station and sort of recruits in the ambulance and the fire department and all this emergency response to fix the problem. And that's what we call the DNA damage response knowing that these particular pathways are deranged in certain diseases, such as neurodegeneration, we can use that information to potentially build therapies. Likewise, in cancer cells, depend on this pathway to live. And if you can sort of tune down the pathway, you can start to kill the cancer cells, which I think would be a very exciting development. I really love the work that we're doing. It's like having my own personal chemistry set to do all these neat experiments. I love it. All right, Ben, you want to take this? No, come on. Mark, you're the cool kid. I'm the geek. That's true. It is true. You guys just don't know him yet. (laughs) You guys don't know. It's really what we talk about all the time. All right. For showing how cells sense and respond damage in their DNA and providing insights into the development and treatment of cancer. 
Our next breakthrough prize in life sciences goes to Stephen Elledge. Stephen Elledge was the first in his family to go to college. As a kid, he became fascinated with science, reading about dinosaurs, molecules, and outer space. Thank you very much. Of course, no, no scientist uh, succeeds alone. And I'd like to thank my family for their support and my many excellent students and colleagues who've helped along the way. And however, I just want to point out that this, this prize is not just a recognition of my laboratory. Uh, it's also a celebration of science itself. And it's very important for our society to, uh, to promote the culture of science and to celebrate its values. The values of reasoning, openness, tolerance, and respect for the evidence. And when the winds blow against science, it's all of our responsibilities to defend science and to promote fact-based reasoning and rationality. And I ask each of you today to rise up to meet that challenge. Thank you very much.